Hey guys, Blake here with another video and today I'm going to talk about this, I'm going to talk about this, let's jump straight into the video. So to get started, we go into our local fish shop, we're looking for a foreground plant, we're typically going to have two choices, there's going to be this guy here, which is a potted foreground plant, this one here is Monte Carlo, and this one here, this is a pot of tissue culture Staragoni repens, so S repens, might be easier to see there. So let's just pretend this one here was also Monte Carlo. Let's talk about why you would decide to choose this cup versus a tissue culture of the exact same plant and the benefits, pros and cons, and the applications that, that one is a better decision than the other. So, first of all, potted Monte Carlo right here. What's good about this is that we know there's a fair chance it is already in its submerged grown form. And what does that mean? It's probably been grown underwater or at least it's been put underwater for the period of time that your fish store has had it. And you can also ask your fish store at this point how long they have had it. It'll give you a better idea of where it is at in terms of transitioning across. Now why is this good? It's good because you're not going to have as dramatic of a melt back as you will with something like this. And we'll get into that, into the reason why um, in a minute. But this plant here is great if your aquarium is already full and you want something to have that instant impact and is not going to sort of change and look different over time. So, so if you have an established aquarium that you're looking to put a foreground in immediately, this one here is the go. Uh, break it up beforehand, plant in little uh, sections and you can be fairly sure that it's going to start growing from that day. But the downsides are that you might also be bringing in things like snails, hydra and planaria which in shrimp tanks especially the latter two can be a real issue. So that is the downside to these. The positive is that it is most likely submerged grown or on its way there. Downsides are pests. Um, algae as well can be another thing, so they might have a little bit of blackbeard algae or something like that on them and you can potentially be bringing that into your aquarium. That's where these guys come in. Tissue cultures, I'll open the lid so you can have a bit of a look. Tissue culture plants are grown in a medium. This can be a liquid or a gel and what the, the story with these guys are, the pot is like a little greenhouse, so they're grown above water, so we know that when we plant this we're not going to have any little remnants of algae, there's going to be no hydra, no planaria and no snails. The downside to that is that in the immersed grown state you'll find that you'll plant it, it will look fantastic, everything will go brown, melt back, eat into itself and then new shoots will come out. What can be a trap for young players is that the new shoots might look slightly different to the plant that you so loved at the aquarium. For example, I will show you right now, that's what the plant looks like in the cup and on screen now is what the plant looks like in an aquarium. Also during that meltback period if you've got a brand new aquarium and you've got things like aquasoil, well there's no longer any plants to really uh, absorb the nutrients that are being put out by that aquasoil so you can find that that's where you can have algae issues. You set up a beautiful uh, dry start method perhaps with some nice new um, aquasoil you fill it up, it looks fantastic for about three days, the plants start to all transform across to their um, submerged grown state and then the aqua soil goes beauty, I'll keep putting out all this nutrients, there's nothing to take it up, so, so be mindful of that. Another aspect where I believe tissue cultures trump uh, the potted uh, submerged grain plant is in dry sap method applications. So it's, I just spoke about the dangers with brand new aqua soil, but if you have existing aqua soil or you're doing a um, capped wallstad method, then I believe tissue cultures can be really great because they're already in their immersed grain state, which is actually a benefit in this case. So dry sap method basically involves creating a humid area. The, the plants have a lot more access to CO2 and as a result grow faster. But to get to that point, they have to be in their immersed grown state. So that's where something like this, your job is already half done for you. So it works in the reverse that way. So after all that, I know it can be fairly confusing and there's little 
bits of information to know all over the place. So in summary, I just wanted to say, if you've got an existing aquarium that you want the impact in today, and you're not worried about pests such as snails, planaria or hydra, get yourself a potted plant such as this Monte Carlo. If you are setting up a dry start method, or you are uh, very scared of snails, hydra, planaria, and other pests, and you don't mind that the plants might melt back and look slightly different, then in that case, I'd recommend picking up a tissue culture such as this Starigani reference. Hopefully you found this video interesting. If you have any further questions about potted plants versus um, tissue culture plants, be sure to drop them down in the comments below and I'll try and answer them. And if you're still left with any questions, head down there. And if the question hasn't already been put down there, be sure to ask it yourself because it might help the next person watching this video. Overall, hope you enjoyed. Hopefully you found it insightful and a little bit informative. If you liked the video, it always helps me out to smash like, hit subscribe and all that fun stuff. Other than that, I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.